Good morning. Welcome everyone to our virtual college and career fair 2020. My name's uh, Ms. Parks from Hunt High School and I'm here with Cassie Naylor from the North Carolina University NC State. Um, she's actually with the College of Natural Resources um, and she is going to be presenting information for you today. So welcome Cassie. Thanks so much. Yeah, so I'm with the College of Natural Resources at NC State. Um, so I'll go over our majors, what opportunities we offer today, and then Ms. Parks, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, you know, as we're going along. Um, so just to give you an overview of the College of Natural Resources, we're one of the 10 colleges under NC State's university. Um, so we house majors that focus on the environment, sustainability, um, and often a lot of STEM majors, so students' interests in science and technology, mathematics, end up coming to our college. Um, so now that you know a little bit about our college, I'll focus on why you should consider the College of Natural Resources before I go into more specifics about each of our majors. Um, so with the College of Natural Resources, we're number six in the nation to study natural resources. So. Um, we're pretty high up there in terms of being able to compete with all the others in terms of, you know, the type of quality of education you receive from us, um, you know, our classes that we offer and the careers that you have the opportunity to go into. Um, we go, we give out $800,000 in scholarships and we only have 1,600 students in our college. Um, so if you think about it, it is a pretty small number. So we do have a lot of scholarships available for students to apply for. Um, like I said, there's only 1,600 students, and that does include graduate students, so it is a very small, close-knit community, um, so we really feel like there's a good family feel in our college. Students and professors know each other well. Professors know every student by name, um, and they really do want you to succeed, and we really emphasize hands-on learning, um, so if you like being in the outdoors or you like being more hands-on and interactive in your learning style, a great place to consider. We don't always sit in a classroom. We really emphasize getting out there and being involved in the community to um, kind of, you know, try out our techniques and really do hands-on learning as well as being outdoors and nature and the environment. Um, and then we also have very strong student support because there are so few students. We really want to make sure they succeed. So we do offer free tutoring to all of our students for all of our classes. Um, we have an enrichment fund, which is a really cool fund you can apply for if you want to study abroad or you want to, you know, do an internship. Um, you can receive funding for that so you're able to do those things. And we have numerous other different options to help you succeed while you're in college. Uh, so, like I said, these are kind of the things we focus on. We really want to tackle brand challenges. Our faculty and staff they wanna make sure students feel like they are a part of the college and not just learning, but actively tackling brand challenges. Um, so you won't just be learning about, you know, how things happen or you know, how things work. We want you to actually be coming up with solutions to problems and we want you to really be active and engaged in your learning. So it makes it a lot more, you know, interactive and more real for you in terms of what you're learning about. So some of the things we tackle, water, um, energy, materials, natural resources, and community. And I'll talk a little bit more about those. So with water, um, we will talk a lot about clean water, accessing that in terms of both for drinking water for communities as well as, um, you know, with different fish populations and ecosystems that depend on water. Um, and then I'll kind of breeze through these first ones because I do want to get straight to our majors, but just kind of give you an idea of what our students talk about a lot. Um, with energy, we talk about affordable energy. So if you've ever seen solar panels or um, any of those other types of like hydro, um, can't think of the word, hydroelectricity, all the different energy sources that they use that are alternative, that's what a lot of our students uh, create and like learn how to better. Um, so that's another option. We often talk about materials. So instead of using plastic for things, we talk about how do we use paper? How do we use bamboo? How do we use cork? We have a lot of 3D printing labs um, in our lab spaces. So you get to really kind of, you know, test out and really look at different options and think of creative new ideas for how we can use materials. 
with natural resource depletion, obviously we look at how do we, you know, sustain ecosystems, sustain forests. So all the animals are real happy in their environments, but we're also still able to like economically use those areas for you know resources such as timber. Um, so there's always a balance there, and that's something our students talk a lot about. And then we also tackle community well-being, which may seem a little bit odd compared to the rest of our college, but we focus on physical well-being, social well-being, um, economic, which is money. Um, so our students look at how do people in a community like physically get outdoors, how are they like interacting, and you know we really tackle some of those uh, things as well, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So our college is broken down into three different departments, and we kind of break that out by the type of students that we see in each department. Um, for the majors highlighted in red on the left side of the screen, we see students who are strong in math and science. So if you really like your math and science classes, those are some options to look at, um, especially if you like being outdoors and kind of working you know, outside and being hands-on, but you also like math and science, it's a good intersection. For the middle column, we see students who are very engineering minded. So if you like being creative and like creating new solutions or coming up with way things work, those are the two majors that we often see students go into. And then on the you know, third column, we see our students who are strong in community engagement. So if you like working with people, you like, you know, creating a sense of community and, you, you know, making, you know, a community thrive, then these are some options for you as well. Um, so to briefly touch on the majors, some highlights. Environmental sciences is our most popular major. Um, what's really cool about this major is you can kind of go as specific as you want or as broad as you want. Um, so students get to choose a focal area and that can be anything you want it to be. It could be, we've seen people choose environmental justice or sustainable housing or marine ecosystems. Um, so really whatever you want. Um, for this major with careers, we see a lot of students who go on to be environmental scientists, they go on to um, be consultants or technicians in terms of like really researching and being outdoors and studying the environment impact. Um, so they really focus on like the physical and social sciences, biological sciences within the environment. And I'll tell a little bit about each you know, person I know in these slides so that you can kind of understand some stories behind some of our students. So in the bottom, you'll see Elizabeth. She is, you know, doing some lab work right there. She's actually in the Bahamas in this picture. So Elizabeth got to go do an internship um, abroad for a uh, summer. So she was in the Bahamas and she was scuba diving every day, um, looking at different fish populations and kind of studying how they you know, interact in the environment and like any issues they may be facing and she got to do a lot of lab work with that. So pretty cool that she was able to scuba dive every day and study fish. With the natural science major, we see students interested in policy. They may want to work in the government later on. They may want to be, um, become lawyers. We see a lot of students interested in environmental law in this major. Um, so they often work with nonprofits or the government at looking at ecosystem impacts and how to better manage and plan for those ecosystems. So Jenna in the red in the middle, um, the rest of those people, um, she went up to Washington DC for a summer for an internship and she worked in policy to help look at, you know, research and come up with different um, policy proposals on how to um, create land bridges for wildlife. That way there's less roadkill and that they have safe ways to travel um, without, you know, disturbing the populations as more development is being built. With fisheries wildlife conservation biology, um, this is for students who are really interested in working with wildlife. If you, like, as a kid ever grew up, like, maybe, like, looking at salamanders in the creek or you, like, just kind of, like, seeing all the creepy crawlies outside or like, you know, deer or whatever other wildlife may be around your home. Um, this is where a lot of students end up if they found that they're very passionate about it. They get to work um, pretty hands-on with wildlife animals. So, um, you know, not domesticated animals, not cows and horses and all that, but more so with the wildlife that you see out, wild, out and about. 
Um, so they look at how those wildlife, you know, travel or like fish populations travel, like how they interact in their ecosystems. Um, they go on to be, you know, game wardens or sometimes park rangers or, you know, wildlife technicians to kind of study those impacts. Um, so this student in the bottom holding the deer, what country is she in? She's in an African country. I cannot remember which one. So she got to study abroad and they did research with wildlife there and saw how they better, you know, how they were interacting, how different development that was coming in was impacting their ecosystems. Um, so that's also an option. We do focus a lot on the study abroad. With forest management, students who like being outdoors a lot get are, you know, are often interested in this career. These students get to spend a lot of time at in the outdoors working with different forest populations, studying trees, studying how to better manage trees. Um, so they do a nine week um, summer camp in the summer after their sophomore year where they study basically like, you know, how to better manage forests. They do prescribed wildlife or wild um, fire burns. So they do a lot of different outdoor techniques. Um, they often work with landowners on how to better manage their forests for either timber or whatever else it is. And then they also look at, you know, how do we sell that timber and make money, but how do we also make sure that you know, we're conserving the land so we can use it for a lot of years to come. So those students up in the top left, they're at a summer camp and that was after they had finished one of their prescribed burns. So they just finished doing some burns. With environmental technology and management, these students are interested in kind of a balance of, I really like chemistry and lab work and research, but they also like to use like technology and being outdoors. Um, so as you can see, they do a lot of work in the outdoors, you know, kind of using different technology to kind of study different impacts on the land, and then they bring that back to the lab. Um, so they can go on to work with large companies such as Duke Energy. We have a lot of students working there um, or other large organizations who do a lot of energy, um, you know, companies, but they go on to work with them to kind of look at their impacts. How do we use technology to kind of like lessen the impacts instead of, you know, increasing all the impacts on the environment um, from those like large companies practices. Uh, so Daniel's not pictured here, but Daniel is a friend of mine in this major and he went to Germany um, this past summer and he studied basically how um, there's toxins in water and when the toxins move through the water, um, often that's like harmful in drinking water or water that wildlife drink. Um, so he was kind of studying how they can use clay to catch those toxins and clay somehow dissolves the toxins in the water. Um, so he did a lot of research on that and he was funded to be able to live in Berlin um, and kind of work in a really prestigious lab doing that. With sustainable materials and technology, these students are, you know, very engineering minded and they often like to be very hands on. So they have a whole lab dedicated just for them that includes 3D printing labs, um, a lot of like wood products. How do we like, you know, use wood instead of plastic? So they do a lot of research with that and a lot of really hands on looking at different materials, doing different tests on different materials and coming up with creative ways to use those materials. Um, so that's kind of, you know, something that they focus on. Paper science and engineering is cool because it is a dual, you know, program with our college and the College of Engineering. So you get all the benefits of being in the College of Engineering and, you know, really having all those different internship opportunities and resources and it's just a really prestigious engineering program but you have the small close-knit community that we talked about with your professors knowing your name here and a lot more support in terms of studying for those harder classes like chemistry and physics. Um, so they do a lot of work with paper, as you see. Um, and yes, paper science is a thing. So they actually work often in paper mills or you know paper labs, um, making paper processes easier. You can see these students down here are with our Wolfpack Baby is what we call it. It's our own paper machine on campus. Um, and they're basically studying how do we like better make the paper um, process more efficient. So one big thing that they're looking at right now is packaging because that's huge obviously with Amazon and other companies really turning to packaging for so much. Um, so how do we make that more efficient and 
more sustainable. Um, and yeah, and they go all over the US to work for their internships and their jobs afterwards. Um, and then these students actually come out with the highest making pay or highest rank pay of any student starting after graduating. So they come out with a starting salary um, on average about 73,000, which is also, you know, very attractive. And they, the ones who are in it, they love the program because they feel like they are very supported. So this is my major. I graduated with last May, Parks Recreation and Tourism Management. So if you like working with people, you like, you know, being in the community, planning events, um, this is a really cool major for you. So with this major, they really emphasize internships and working with different backgrounds and cultures. Um, we did a lot of program planning, a lot of like looking at different facilities. So um, I've had friends who've worked with Mount Rushmore, who worked with Yosemite National Park, um, one who has worked with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and she now works for the Ronald McDonald House in, uh, at, up at UNC. Um, planning events. So if you like kind of planning events and being around people and just like really creating experience for them, this is a really cool major. Not that I'm biased, but I loved it. Um, so sport management is often very popular with students who were very involved in athletics as they're growing up. Um, and what we say about sport management is you can pretty much go anywhere with it except for actually playing on the field. Um, in terms of the business world. So you can do anything from, you know, managing and operating a park, not a park, but like a soccer park, um, or you can do marketing and recruitment, or you can work in operations or public relations, anything that around surrounds sport. So with this, we have students working all across Raleigh and North Carolina and the U.S. Um, with the Carolina Hurricanes as their operations coordinator, um, or with the North Carolina Football Club as their, um, you know, marketing and social media person. So we have a wide variety of students who really were passionate about sport and they wanted to, con to continue to work in that industry. And last but not least, we have professional golf management. Um, so with this, for students who have had a strong background and interest in golf, um, these students go on to train to become golf professionals. So they do 16 months of internships. So they have a lot of experience that is very hands-on. Um, so they do a lot of that focus on the business side as we were talking about with sport management. So that can be working in events, to facilities, to marketing, as I said, but all kind of surrounding the golf industry. Um, yeah, so that is my spiel on all the different majors. and. <laughs> Um, you know, kind of what they do. I have a few more slides, but do you have any questions yet? No? Okay, cool. I'll keep going with my slides then, and then if you have questions at the end. Um, so kind of looking at, hmm, maybe you're interested in some of these majors. You want, might want to, you know, check some out in the future. Maybe you decide to major in some of these. So you're looking at, okay, what's my, you know, chances? How can I do this? Um, so this is your opportunity to make an impact. If you remember back to the beginning of the presentation, we talked a lot about tackling those grand challenges, you know, really being active and making like amazing things happen for the world, environmentally, socially, economically. Um, but great news is you're already on the path. The fact that you're even, you know, considering and really being serious and looking at colleges right now is great. Um, so we need more people in these career fields. As I said, we have very few students in our college because um, most people just don't know you can major in these things. They're kind of more niche majors. Um, but once people discover them, they love them because they're like, I didn't even know I could do this for a career. And you can. Um, so we need people who are really passionate about these type of things who are interested in coming um, to NC State College Natural Resources to do this. So I'm going to put on the you know, board a couple of different sample careers. Um, you know, you can pause the video and look through them a little bit more. Feel free to Google some of these, what these are like. Um, but these are all alumni who have graduated from our college and gone on to do all these things. So like I said, we have alumni all over the US, all over the world doing really awesome things um, to make an impact. So you can do anything from working in the wetlands if you really have a passion about working with animals and kind of ecosystems. Um, on here we have park rangers. Maybe you really enjoyed like going to like summer camp or being outdoors or going to the national parks. We have um, you know alumni who went on to be park rangers. 
Um, we have ecotourism guides. So my concentration was sustainable tourism. Um, so we do have students who focus in tourism and kind of looking at sustainability in that. So we have uh, students who've gone on to do that. And then we also have environmental educators or, you know, youth and senior activity coordinators. So if you like working with people and you like the science aspect, you can always do both. Um, so we do have, you know, many different options. So kind of considering about uh, maybe you're a junior or even a sophomore and you're like, okay, how do I need to start planning for if I want to go to NC State or one of these majors? Um, so if you are a junior, just know that the first application deadline is November 1st. Um, and always apply early, no matter what college it is, whether it's our college or another college, always apply to the first deadline. It's very, very helpful for you. Um, but so what is NC State looking for? Say you're like interested in one of these majors. We wanna see that you have strong grades and competitive coursework. We wanna see that you really, you know, feel like you can take on the rigor um, of being an NC State student. We want to see if you've been doing outside the classroom. Have you been doing things that have related to maybe the major you're applying for? So say you're interested in um, environmental sciences. Have you, you know, maybe taken on um, a, a volunteer position during your four years or something working with an aquarium or, you know, something, a local organization? Have you gone to a summer camp related to it? Um, are you in a student club related to the major you're applying for? Like, you know, show us why you're passionate, show us that you're actively doing things that are similar to the major. Um, we want to see your story and kind of who you are as a person, what makes you unique. We want to see, like, what can really um, set you apart and why, you know, you would be a great addition and a great new person to bring into our program. So that's kind of the main things we're looking for. Uh, but over the next few months, this month we have Environmental Career Month running. Um, so I've given Ms. Parks your that information for that that I think she's going to share out. Um, it's never too late to register. You can register even the last week and just attend the last sessions, but that's a great thing if you're interested in learning more. Uh, that's going to run all through April. Over the summer and into the fall, we do personal visits on campus. If you ever want to visit us personally, we can, you know, give you a personal tour. And then an open house is in October. So in October, all of campus will be open and you can come to our open house and like really see our majors, talk to current students, talk to all the professors and see all the options that there are at NC State. So that's a big one to look forward to. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us, you know, our recruitment, that's my email um, and I'll respond to you and you know, we can talk about anything you're interested in. So yeah, that's all I have. Do you have questions? Uh, no, I've, I've learned so much, I mean, <laughs> So, um, one of the reasons I started this was because um, I started like three, three or four years ago. Um, I didn't know about like any of these majors. And like when I went to college, I didn't take any college tours. Like my parents didn't, you know, take me anywhere. Um, I didn't learn about different majors. I was from like the middle of nowhere where everybody was like teacher, lawyer, doctor, yeah. Um, and so when I got to college, it was like, what are all these majors? Um, and you know, you don't really have time to, to choose because they say you have time, but you really don't. Um, because I was in one major and then I didn't like it. And so then I changed. So I lost like a whole semester of credit that I paid for, <laughs> which means I had to pay for another semester <laughs> in my major um and then I changed it again I think I changed my major at least three or four times and um I went to different colleges within the college you know so like you're part of the College of Natural Resources um and so I was in the um, business school and then I moved over to exercise science um and I just like I've never heard of the College of Natural Resources <laughs> I mean, I've heard of the jobs that you were discussing, but, um, like, but I've never heard of, like, what, what do you major in to do this, you know, and I think the reason I like this, and um, this was so, you know, eye-opening, was because, you know, you are telling the kids, and we're offering them a platform where, like, I don't know if they know this, you know, kind of thing, like, 
I ask my kids all the time, I've been teaching for 10 years, like, what do you want to be? And you know, the next couple of years when you graduate, <laughs> whether it's college or not. And I always hear um, the same um, stuff. And it's like, you never hear environmentalist, you know, or I'm going to work on, you know, paper and figure out how to make it more sustainable. Like you just don't hear um, these outside the box, you know, degrees, even though, like you said, I mean, the scholarship money was like, what, $800,000 in scholarships available? Like, I want to go major in it. <laughs> so, like, can I, can I go back to school again? I mean, I'm working on my master's, but like, we can just get a whole new one. Because <laughs> so, I, I really was um, it's so impressed with, with um, some of the different areas that are in this college. Like, who would think that like a forest ranger would still be in the same area with a, a golfer, you know, that's like, that's what was really, um, was impressive to me. Like, Oh, they're grouped together. Like that's insane. And, um, and it's so small, like only 1600, including your grad, like that's small. Um, small. And I think the like 800,000 and, scholarships that all comes from alumni so I think that really goes to show how much they love their experiences here yeah and there's a huge huge need for it right now um huge for all of them um high demand and I think there's a high demand because people like me weren't like exposed to these jobs and so you just don't have my age and I'm not going to give it away but <laughs> you just don't have people my age in these fields and so it's very thin and so if we don't keep telling these kids about oh look you can do this and you can do that like you're still going to keep having these um low numbers and that's that's sad because it's the environment a lot of it was environmental but like it's sad because there's huge opportunity um I'd love to see like the number of people that major in criminal justice versus. <laughs> it's a lot. Our college is like 1600 and then engineering is over there with like, I don't even know, like 8,000. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's super competitive and I bet it really makes it hard to get into those schools. Um, but you know, in your area, you could get in, but like kind of like a different way and then go on to like grad school in something more specific too. Um, so that's a thought. That's just, it was, a, I, I was third, I learned a lot. Like I, I was so like entranced, like, oh wow, look at that. And look at that. Like, I, I love it. I want to like, I'm going to teach my daughter about <laughs> about natural college of natural resources now <laughs> yeah tell all your students about it <laughs> well i'm a girl scout leader too so i'm gonna be like look ladies here it is yeah, <laughs> this is right up our alley <laughs> awesome. i'm doing a presentation for coastal pines girl scouts in a couple of weeks so yeah no i'm we i'm part of the coastal pines but yeah okay then i'll be the techno quest so that's great. I mean, it sounds perfect because she goes to camp every summer um, and she goes for two or three weeks. Like she just keeps wanting to go back. It's a lot of fun for her. Um, she's not too much into like the creepy crawlers, but she likes, you know, to be and do. And, and, and I think, I think she might be more of one of the like, figure out how to like do the water or stuff like how to improve. She's more of like the engineer mind. Um, but it's all all inclusive, and I think that's just awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love it. I love talking about it. <laughs> yeah, even the event planning. I was like, where did that come from? Yeah. Like you, you know, you were going with the forestry stuff and the environmental, and then you went into event planning and, and golf, and I was like, whoa! Like <laughs> that's awesome, though. Yeah. yeah, that's really awesome. So um, I'd learned a lot and I didn't have, like, I was trying to jot down some questions and I was like, you got them. I mean, I had a good time. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, so good, good, good presentation. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for anybody and we're going to leave the email up for you. Hopefully you um, can look right now at the screen and get the email address. I'm going to be sharing the other resources that um, Kashi uh, told you about. And then um, 
hopefully I'll see everybody again. So thank you so much for um, helping out. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.